Welcome back to another YouTube video. We are so happy to have you. I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica, and we're the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkla. Today we're going to talk about 10 sensory activities that you can do to boost your child's fine motor skills. So before we get started, what the heck are fine motor skills? You probably have heard all of the rage about them. They are very important. They are all of the things that you do with your fingers in order to manipulate objects, in order to write, in order to complete small tasks with your fingers. The trick here is that in order to have good fine motor skills, you also have to have good upper body strength and stability. So when we're working on fine motor skills, we also want to incorporate some core strengthening activities, some upper body strengthening activities, neck strengthening activities, as well as those hand strengthening activities as well. We always say proximal stability before distal control in the OT world. So what does that mean? Proximal means your joints closest to your torso, so we need proximal stability before distal control, which is the distant fingers from your body. <laughs> <laughs> So you have to have good stability before you can have those fine motor skills. And so a lot of the activities that we're going to share with you today, you wouldn't necessarily think, oh, these are fine motor activities, but they work that trunk postural stability so that way you can have good fine motor skills. Now, why are our fine motor skills so, so important, not just for us as adults, but also for our children? What activities are our children completing every day that require good fine motor control? Literally everything. Everything. In OT, we talk about ADLs or activities of daily living. So that's a big one that you need fine motor skills for. So things like eating, holding a spoon, brushing your teeth, writing, wiping your bum. Getting dressed. Tying your shoes. Mm -hmm academic skills. Yep. And then the main one, the main occupation of a child is play. And a child needs good fine motor skills to be able to engage in lots of different play activities, whether it's building with Legos or going across the monkey bars on the playground. Those all require development of the hand muscles and control of those fingers. So if you aren't sure if your child is struggling with fine motor skills, if you don't know what the norms look like, or if you just want Want something to look for if your child is struggling in this area, just simply looking at their hands can tell you a lot. One thing that we look for are fingers with maybe low muscle tone. So if you, you know, put your fingers together, they should have good, strong muscles in the hands. We want, you know, strong looking finger. finger. I, this is weird to say, strong looking fingers. You do want strong looking fingers. Did you know? <laughs> You can also just look at their upper body strength and stability too. Do they kind of have a rounded posture, rounded shoulders? Are they able to activate their upper body muscles for different activities? Or do you notice that they maybe have low muscle tone or they lock or hyperextend their elbows during weight bearing activities? Those are all some clues that will, you know, clue you in to that maybe your child is struggling with fine motor. Another thing to think about is did your child crawl as a baby or did they do a different type of crawling pattern that isn't necessarily the good asymmetrical crawling on all fours because crawling is a great way to build that intrinsic hand strength in infants and it really sets them up for success with future fine motor skills. Another thing is are they compensating? So when they're sitting at the table or when they're eating, are they resting their arm on the table? Are they holding holding their spoon or their pencil in a fisted grasp instead of with their fingers. So we can look at those different compensatory methods as well to see if those fine motor skills are lacking. Ultimately, if your child is struggling with fine motor skills, these 10 activities that we're going to share with you are great to incorporate into the daily routine, whether it's some sensory diet activities that you add these to in the morning or the afternoon or evening. You incorporate them into obstacle courses. If you're a therapist, you can incorporate these activities into your treatment session. If you're in the schools, you can incorporate it into uh, like a warm-up before a handwriting activity during the class. And even if your child doesn't struggle with fine motor skills, this is still, these are still great activities to include just for fun to mm -hmm. kind of maintain those skills. My go-to is always the car. 
You know, that's when kids can have really good focus is they're strapped into their car seat, they can't move, except their fingers, and you can actually work on a lot of those good fine motor skills in the car. Especially on road trips, mm -hmm. long road trips. Yep. Okay, let's jump into our top 10 fine motor activities. Number one is to crumple a piece of paper with just one hand. So this is gonna be just a plain piece of paper and you're gonna have your- Or a recycled piece of paper. Yeah, something, something you're gonna <laughs> recycle, sure. And you're gonna have your child use one hand and pick it up off the table and then making sure that they don't use their opposite hand or the table or their body to help, they're going to use just their fingers to crumple that piece of paper into a ball and then you can also have them try to uncrumple it with just the one hand. Now you wanna make sure that you do have them do this with both hands. So they do it with one hand first, maybe they start with their dominant hand, and then they do the same thing with their non-dominant hand. This is really gonna build a lot of dexterity and coordination with their fingers. Yep. The next one is more of an upper body strengthening activity we like to call ball walkouts. We've talked about them before. We absolutely love them. You're gonna roll out over a round therapy ball or a peanut ball onto your hands, kind of like you're gonna do a push-up. And then if your child is capable to do so, have them like tuck their knees under and then walk back towards the ball again. So it's like you're kind of walking out to do a plank, bring those legs under for a little crunch at the end and then straighten them out and walk back. And this is a great one to watch for those compensatory methods, make sure that their hands are pointing forward and make sure that they're not hyperextending their elbows and then watch for that scapular winging on their back as well. So we really wanna facilitate strong upper body muscles, um, watch their lower back so they're not concaving in, we don't want any of that um, compensatory posture in their trunk. So if you need to modify this one so that way they don't go out as far, so that way they have good posture, then that is totally okay to start with that. I think another thing with this activity is to make sure that the ball is the right size for the child because if it's too big or too small, then they're gonna use compensatory strategies to just keep their balance and have to adjust because the ball is not the right size for them. Yeah, and I will go along with that too. That's like helps stabilize the ball too so they're not on their own just like flailing like a fish. You just wanna make sure that they have the ability to walk out and walk back and give them the support as needed. The next one is to use a spoon to transfer items from one container to the next. This is great to do with a sensory bin of rice or beans and have some cups outside of the sensory bin and have your child use a spoon to scoop a spoonful from the sensory bin, transfer it all the way over to a cup and pour it in. This is really, really great if your child struggles with self-feeding. They're gonna have to learn how to manipulate and hold and control that spoon with their fingers. And that's the trick here too, is that they have to use their fingers. They can't use a full fisted grasp on the spoon teach them how to hold it with their fingers, teach them how to you know, rotate their wrist and their forearm, just scoop and pour and turn it into some sort of game. Maybe they have to fill the cups to different levels or they have to sort different items in the sensory bin. Maybe they're scooping pennies from the sensory mm -hmm. bin and having to sort them or something like that. One of my favorite ways to use the spoon game is to hold like a racquetball on the spoon and incorporate it into like a gross motor obstacle course. So hard. You have to hold the ball or the object on the spoon with that proper grasp and then climb over the obstacles, go under, weave, ride on the scooter board without it falling off. Super fun, but also very difficult. And it's a great way to work on perseverance and frustration tolerance because of course the ball's gonna fall off and they have to take a deep breath and keep going and stay cool, calm, and collected. Okay, next one, we are going to cut plastic straws and string them onto a piece of string. And so this is a great way to work on multiple skills simultaneously, cutting. And when you cut straws, I don't know if you've ever done this before, but they pop. And so it's really motivating for kids to be able to cut those straws and see them pop all over the place. And then they have to go crawl on their belly and find them and then string them onto their piece of string or um, a hard spaghetti noodle or um, a shoelace, something that might be a little bit easier than just a piece of string. Or Pipe cleaner. Pipe cleaner, pipe yes, cleaner. thank you. Yeah, there you go. So there you go. The next one is gonna be sequential finger touching. And this is where you're gonna have your child touch the tip of each of their fingers 
to the tip of their thumb. And you want to make sure when they're doing this that their thumb and their fingers make the shape of an O or a circle. So they're bending all of those joints, they're activating those hand muscles. Do this with both hands, do it with their eyes closed, maybe add a metronome so they have to tap their thumb and their finger to the beats of the metronome, but this is really going to work on those palmar arches as well as help to integrate the palmar grasp reflex, which if your child has a retained palmar grasp reflex, this is significantly going to impact their fine motor skills. The next one is going to be untying knots, either in shoelaces or big ropes. Um, it takes a lot of those precision fine motor skills to untie those, as well as some visual perception, some visual motor skills. Um, it's a great activity to maybe tie some different beads onto the strings as well, so they have to untie the beads in order to string them on a pipe cleaner or something. And you know, we always like to try to incorporate as many skills simultaneously as one, at once as possible. And so you could almost have the, the pipe cleaner attached to a door handle behind the child so they have to tip their head back and string the bead on to the pipe cleaner above them to facilitate that vestibular sense. And that's a great way to practice if a kid doesn't like to tip their head back in the bath. So untying the ropes, untying these all, you know, how do we get from untying ropes to tipping your head back in the back? I have no idea, but that's where we are. Give it a try. You'll thank me later. The next one is wall walk-ups. And this is where you are going to be just a couple of feet away from the wall. You're going to put your hands on the ground and walk your feet up the wall. So you're in this upside down inverted position using all of your upper body muscles, your core muscles to stabilize your body and stay in that position, making sure your hands are flat. That's really where you're going to work on that hand strength. But then of course, this one is really great for upper body and core stability as well. Plus it's really fun. It provides a lot of great vestibular and proprioceptive input, and it works on a lot of motor planning. If your child has never done an activity like this, they really have to figure out how to coordinate their upper body and lower body together. So kind of just like our last one, incorporating a lot of skills all at once, this is a great one to do. The next one is to pick up items with tongs, and there are a ton of different types of tongs out there. Um, my favorite are the like child um, chopsticks, you know, the modified chopsticks with like yes. the shark teeth on one side. Um, there's lots of, lots of different options, but just working on a three jaw grasp, we call it a three jaw, three, three jaw chuck. What do you call it? Mm -hmm. Three jaw chuck grasp. Yeah. Wow. I had a hard time getting that out. <laughs> just working with the three <laughs> fingers and then you want the tongs to come and rest like they would a pencil. So ideally we're facilitating that pencil grasp and we're working on those, those underlying skills for handwriting and, and uh, of course the fine motor skills. So tongs, pick up anything you can with tongs. Oftentimes these kiddos with uh, difficulty with fine motor skills will struggle to hold those tongs with that functional grasp and be able to rest it back in the web space. They'll hold it in a full fisted grasp or they'll have the tongs under their hand to use it. So really making sure you're focusing on how they're grasping the tongs is key here. Thank you. I couldn't get that, that out. So no, I think thank it was you great. for. That's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> The next one is to use clothes pins to hang items on a string. Now the string can be hanging vertically in front of your child or horizontally above them. And then you're gonna use things like socks or mittens or pieces of paper or anything light enough to hang on a string and use the clothes pin to hang up this item. Again, we're really focusing on how your child is grasping and pinching those clothes pins, but this is also great because we really facilitate a lot of bilateral integration. They have to use their other hand, their non-dominant hand, to stabilize and position the item against the string to then come and clip it on. So lots of things working here, including that visual motor component. Yeah. Always multitasking. Always. All right, the last one is to practice sign language. This was always one of my favorite activities in the clinic. We would print out a piece of paper with all of the different hand signals for the alphabet, hand signals, all the different signs for the letters. And this is something that I've known ever since I was a kid, and I love teaching kids to do this because number one, it takes a lot of motor planning, a lot of praxis, a lot of control 
to form those letters with your fingers. And oftentimes we will have the kiddos do um, both hands at the same time. You'll see overflow associated movement. So if they're trying really hard to make a certain letter with one hand, their other hand will kind of um, have kind of an overflow movement. It will be compensating. Or you'll see it in their mouth. In their mouth as well, yep. Um, so sometimes just having them do it with both hands simultaneously, having them spell their name or write letters and have them follow the letters with their fingers. And there's a lot of different functional ways that you can do it, but it's a great fine motor activity, kind of like the sequential finger touching, just a little bit more functional and um, I'd say a little bit more challenging. Definitely more challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna link a lot of different resources in the description below different podcast episodes, other YouTube videos that go along with everything we talked about today so you can just learn more about all the things we mentioned because mm -hmm. I feel like we mentioned a lot of yeah. things. Yeah. <laughs> If you don't already listen to our podcast, make sure that you check out All Things Sensory on any platform that you listen to podcasts. We have lots of episodes, over 200 episodes on topics from A to Z and everywhere in between. Yeah. All the letters. We yes. have podcasts on all the letters. Uh, you can also find us on social media. We're at Harkla underscore family, as well as at All Things Sensory Podcast. So make sure you check us out there. We share a ton of helpful information. If you are very concerned with your child's ability to complete fine motor skills and it is impacting their ability to get through their daily tasks, their daily occupations, make sure you reach out to your local occupational therapist to get those in-person services. Sometimes an evaluation is the best way to go because nothing beats in-person therapy services. Make sure you like this video if you found it helpful. Share a comment with what, you know, the most insightful thing we shared was for inspirational. you. Inspirational <laughs> thing that you got, got from this video. Share this video with your friends. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss a new video. Yep. And with that, we will plan on seeing you next week. <laughs> I just had to get it out of my system. Did you wink? No, I just oh, tried to no. look smitten. Oh.